Hey folks, I want to talk today about the use of alpha-5 reductase inhibitors in the treatment of androgenic alopecia, hair loss. And there's two, well actually I think there's more than two that exist, but there's two which are most widely known in the hair loss community. Um, the most common of course is finasteride since that one is actually prescribed for male pattern baldness. And I talked about that drug extensively in my last video, but there's another one uh, which is also used quite frequently even though it is not prescribed for male pattern baldness and it's called uh, Dutasteride. Its trade name is Avodart, and I also have a prescription for this drug as well. As you can see, I think, uh, yeah. It's an 0.5 milligram uh, capsule, unlike finasteride, which is a tablet that can be effectively uh, quartered, which is something you'd want to do if you got Proscar, since it's a 5 milligram tablet, and you only need about 1 to 1.25 milligrams a day for uh, the effective dose for treating hair loss. Now, um, the reason why this is often used is because of the belief that it is more effective at treating hair loss than finasteride. And on paper, this sounds like uh, it's true, because finasteride only inhibits two types of DHT. I think it's the type 2 and type 3, whereas uh, 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 dutasteride, also known as Avodart, um, inhibits all three types of DHT. Now, there's lots of studies that show a comparison uh, comparison of like DHT suppression of finasteride versus dutasteride, and it shows that like I think like dutasteride is about 20% or so more effective than finasteride, so that's pretty substantial. So uh, I've used dutasteride in the past. I've used finasteride for a good while now, since I was about 22 years old. I'm 34 years old today, and I find uh, that both the drugs are indeed effective for the treatment of male pattern baldness, but not, not just male pattern baldness, but also other um, um, adverse effects, uh, adverse androgenic effects, such as like it's reduced my acne substantially, and you know, I'm not peeing, going to the restroom as often, so you know, whether or not that's a sign I had enlarged prostate, maybe, I've never been officially diagnosed, but that's definitely a welcome uh, side effect, you could say, or a welcome intended effect, since that's what the drugs are prescribed for. But anyways, um, the reason why I uh, started using dutasteride um, a few years back is because I found that like even though finasteride as well as minoxidil and some of the other treatments I've used have been effective at stopping my hair loss, they didn't actually bring my hair to a level where I wanted it to be in terms of thickness. I mean, today it's uh, it's 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 pretty thick. I mean, it's not like as thick as it was when I was a teenager, but you know, that's that would be an unrealistic expectation. But it was uh, kind of like, it was kind of thin before, so I wanted to thicken it up a little bit. And I think adding dutasteride to my uh, routine actually helped uh, pretty substantially with that. And it's it's funny, because you know, I heard a lot of people say that like, oh, if you didn't get side effects from finasteride, you're definitely going to get side effects from dutasteride. But you know, I disagree. I'd say that if you do get side effects from finasteride, you probably shouldn't take dutasteride since it works in a very similar mechanism. But but uh, if you are a well a good responder to finasteride, I think that dutasteride should work for you. So if you if you don't mind paying uh, slightly more, because you know finasteride costs me about seventy dollars for a three month supply, uh, whereas uh, dutasteride costs about twenty dollars for one month supply, then I'd say yeah, go ahead and uh, take the plunge. It's the, I mean you have nothing to lose. I mean if you get side effects, just go ahead and stop. I mean all the claims that like there's th about these persistent side effects, uh, it's complete bullshit. There's no study to, uh, which um, directly links like finasteride or dutasteride to um, uh, to any permanent side effects whatsoever. It's just not true. So, other than uh, alpha-5 reductase inhibitors, I think that um, another thing that's really effective for the treatment of hair loss are shampoos, which contain the ingredient ketoconazole. Now, there's a lot of, like, a lot of videos, like, like, you know, from that hair loss from steroids guy and, like, uh, a few other people which talk about this, so I'm not going to go too in-depth, but yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the idea is that ketoconazole, it's a relatively weak anti-androgen. So uh, it helps uh, inhibit thing, uh, inhibit DHT topically on your scalp. And the one that I uh, recommend the most is definitely uh, Revita. And the reason why is because even though it doesn't have as much ketoconazole as uh, Nizoril, well, Nizoril 2%, this is the 1% bottle, which I use occasionally, it is it can be used more frequently because it's not nearly as harsh on the hair. Like um, other hair loss shampoos like Region Pure, which is all right, and I used to use that quite frequently, but I now prefer Revita and uh, Nizoril, uh, they tend to like really fry out the hair and you can't use it that often. So even if they have more ketoconazole in it, it's not going to be that effective if you can't use it that often. Because I really think that's something that's considered a weak anti-androgen 
should probably be used more frequently if you want to be effective. I mean, like the the, the recommendation on the bottle is two times per week. For that's what Nizerol says, but that's the recommendation for treating dandruff, which is what the shampoo is actually uh, intended for. But I think for hair loss, you probably should use it more frequently. And yeah, if you're one of the few individuals that can use like the really strong stuff, like two percent Nizerol every day, then yeah, go ahead. But yeah, it's not going to work for me. I mean, my hair would just look like shit. I mean, no point in saying, saving my hair if my hair is just going to look like crap all the time. So, yeah, I recommend those. Now, of course, uh, when it comes to treating hair loss, your biggest enemy is DHT. And people need to stop thinking that DHT is some, like, vitally important hormone for, like, sexual function, for strength, for being a man. I mean, it's, it's basically a trash hormone. What it is is it's the worthless trash byproduct of testosterone. The reason why our body even converts testosterone to DHT is to prevent us from producing too much testosterone. Because too much testosterone means aromatization. And that's why some people actually get side effects from finasteride and dutasteride is because when you inhibit the conversion of testosterone to DHT, that means more testosterone. And some people, for some people, that means that extra testosterone will aromatize into estrogen, and that's a very, very rare side effect, but if it does happen, that means you'll get some estrogenic side effects, you know, like reduced muscle mass, lethargy, even gynecomastia, but, you know, those side effects are incredibly rare because the fact is that uh, dutasteride and finasteride doesn't raise your testosterone by that much. It does a little bit, and I've actually experienced some uh, beneficial gains uh, not just in terms of like my hair, but also in terms of my lifting numbers at the, gy the gym. I become uh, a little bit stronger as a result of consistently using finasteride and dutasteride, although I credit most of my gains to just an effective training program as well as a, a good healthy diet. But um, testosterone is the main male hormone, not DHT. I mean, DHT has some uses in the body, like uh, like during puberty, it helps with some development, but like, but other than that, the only thing it really does, like when we're adults, is that it turns us into old men. It, it enlarges our prostate, gives us acne, causes our hair to fall out. There's millions of men who suppress DHT into their adult life, and they don't have any health ramifications at all, despite the fact that they're inhibiting their DHT 70%, sometimes 90% or more. So I really am not convinced that DHT has any crucial function in the, in, in the adult body, because if it did, then like, you know, far more people would obviously get side effects. Now, the only time you may want to, like, uh, refrain from using uh, finasteride or dutasteride is if, like, you're under the age of 18, you haven't been finished growing yet, because in, in that case, uh, DHT may play uh, some minor roles in, in, uh, during puberty, during, like, just uh, regular development. And if you are experiencing hair loss and you're not an adult yet, then I'd recommend probably just using minoxidil and uh, uh, like a ketoconazole shampoo and also giving a RU5841 a shot. That's that uh, compound I mentioned in my previous video which is a topical anti-androgen and you know some people tell me it's even more effective than dutasteride so hell if that works for you may, you may not even you need an alpha-5 reductase inhibitor. But the important thing is, is that you act as soon as possible because you know when it comes to hair loss time is of the essence. You can't like uh, wait a substantially long period of time because once you've lost your hair you will never get a back. I mean, you can, like, replace it with, like, a transplant, but, you know, that costs thousands and thousands of dollars. Oftentimes, it doesn't even look that good. So, uh, you know, once you go bald, it's pretty much game over. So, act soon and 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 don't, like, go for any, like, experimental bullshit. Don't fall for any of the natural remedies or anything like that, because the fact is, the most natural cure for hair loss is letting yourself go bald, because hair loss, unfortunately, is natural. If you want to fight hair loss, you got to fight nature, and you can't do that with nature itself. So, anyways, uh, good luck. Let me guys, let me know if you guys have any questions about hair loss. Take care.